May the God of hope give you the fullness of peace, and may the Lord of life be always with you. In the waters of baptism, our brother Brendan died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. stole is the symbol of Christ's priestly authority to teach and to forgive sins in the name of Christ. May Father Brendan now receive the pardon that he brought to God's people. In life, Father Brendan celebrated the Eucharist for God's people. May he be brought rejoicing to the great liturgy of heaven. In life, Brendan cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Brendan received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Brendan, your servant and priest, whom you honoured with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exult forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment can ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their, look, their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust they who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. The scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks, every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you also. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my accounts. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lords. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we come here to commend a dear and good and holy priest, Brendan, to the Lord. We come as priests to commend a, a brother, and I know Canon Sean was friend and brother to Dennis for 70 years. We remember him today and we gather to commend to the Lord someone who was for you a, a shepherd and a father, a priest who was a good example and a, a blessing to you. And we come to commend a man who was brother to Nula and Attractor and Liam and 
uncle to many nieces and nephews and extended family and we uh, join with those of Brendan's family watching online from Ireland and from England and France as well as from Scotland. We're all united together in the love of Christ. We gather in this cathedral where our brother Canon Brendan served as a curate in his early years of priesthood and now at the last, at the end of his earthly journey, we commend him from here to the Lord to have mercy on his holy soul to welcome him home to reward him for his faithful ministry among us. The Book of Wisdom reflects on how the death of virtuous men can sometimes seem like a disaster when a loved one is taken from us too suddenly, too soon. The leaving us can certainly feel like an annihilation. Not so today. Not so with dear Brendan, who lived a long and fruitful life among us. His last years were lived in peace. And as he awaited the Lord's return to take him home, his hope was rich and getting richer with thoughts of immortality and of the great blessings to be. His gentle return home is no disaster, really, and has about it more the feel of a happy ending, even a victory. Like his Lord and Saviour before him, Brendan was tested in the ordinary chores of his priestly service and in the end proved worthy to be with the Lord as King forever. He trusted in the Lord all his days. He under the, understood the truth of his salvation in Christ. And faithful to the last, we have every hope he will live with God in love and in the grace and mercy that await his chosen. St. Paul reminds us that the life and death of each of us has its influence, and he held up for us, for our Christian example, those who live for the Lord in their daily lives, choosing to die to self, to live for the Lord and others. They have no fear when they come to stand before the judgment seat of God to give an account of themselves, but rather delight with all their heart and soul to bend the knee before the Lord they love, praising his name forever. And so to Brendan's life that had such an influence on us. He was born on the 9th of May 1930 in County Fermanagh, the son of Patrick and Catherine, into a faithful and devout Catholic home where prayer and devotions around the hearth and in the local school and parish were interwoven into the fabric of Brendan's early life and formative years. And so it was no surprise that in that faith-filled environment the Lord would come a-calling, just as he had on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, where other ordinary men were at their work casting and mending their nets. Nor was it any surprise that the same Catholic environment would favour Brendan hearing that divine call to the priesthood with the assurance and courage to accept his vocation. Following the Lord's call took him to seminary in St. Patrick's College, Carlow, where upon completing his studies and formation he was ordained priest on the 6th of June 1954 in the Cathedral of the Assumption of the Blessed Mother in Carlo. Brothers and sisters, the Lord not only calls his disciples to follow him, but he sends them out. Go into the whole world, he said, and preach the good news to all the nations. So it's to our lasting blessing that Lord's missionary mandate sent Brendan to the Diocese of Paisley, as it had done many centuries earlier with his 
predecessor countryman, St Mirren, who founded her church in Paisley. And for over 50 years, Brendan faithfully served as a priest in our diocese, guiding our people like a shepherd, teaching them the ways of virtue and holiness, nourishing them towards salvation with the sacraments of the church. His first half of priestly ministry served as a curate in St. James's Paisley and St. Mirren's Cathedral. And round about the time of his silver jubilee, he took on the further responsibility of parish priest in St. Anthony Spatston, finally St. Conville's Linwood, until his retirement in 1998. In all that service as a priest, Brendan was popular both with clergy and people. He won the affection of faithful Catholics, especially across Renfrewshire and East Renfrewshire where he served. The respect of the clergy across the diocese and the trust of the bishops under whom he served. In recognition, Bishop John Moon elected him to serve as canon of the cathedral chapter. Of course, retirement was not the end of his priestly service, for Brendan understood the word of the Lord, you're a priest forever. And after the heart of Jesus, the good shepherd, who loving his own loved them, to the end, Brendan continued to serve God's people, first in retirement in Linwood, then in St. John's Barhead, and finally in St. Charles's Paisley. And he was grateful to the parish priests and the people of those parishes who tended him so well in retirement and cherished them in their midst as a good priest and holy man. His last seven years passed full of life and contentment in the Holy Rosary residence of the Little Sisters of the Poor were spent in prayer and reflection. The sisters in the community knew him as a holy man, a good priest, a man of God, and a blessing to their home. His finest testimony to the welcome he received and the home that was made for him there was to say that he always wished he had moved in much sooner. I want to thank First Mother Stephen, now Mother Anna Maria, and all the sisters and staff for the wonderful care they gave to him and to all our retired priests, which is a consolation to me and surely a unique fragrance of love most pleasing to the Lord. Brendan came to Scotland along with a long line of fellow Irish priests who built up the Catholic faith in Scotland with their quiet and dedicated pastoral care. He remained friendly with the squad of his fellow Irish priests in the diocese and enjoyed his day off in Troon every week with them. As Brendan takes leave of us to join them in that eternal day of rest, we remember the many who have gone before him from Ireland with fondness and gratitude. And we remember those few who still remain with us in our condolences and prayers. And brothers and sisters, as we commend our brother to the Lord, we give thanks for a hard-working priest prayerful, both alone in faithfulness to his breviary and rosary, and together with his people in parish devotions. We commend to the Lord a priest who is humble, poor in spirit, assiduous and just in his relations with God, hungering for ever closer union with him, and above all, persevering and merciful to those in his care. Brendan had the mark of the Lord's holiness in his life, and we could see the Lord's goodness follow him always to the end of his days. May he now rest in peace. We stand to make our prayers to the Father. God our Father, you sent your Son among us as our Good Shepherd and High Priest. We commend into your hands 
a priest of our Lord Jesus Christ in these days of prayer and praise. Father Brendan, who in baptism has given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brother Brendan, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brother, Father Brendan, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy, for the family and friends of our brother priest, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you in your love to hear all our prayers and in your divine mercy to answer them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Brendan, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. 
And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So the angels and dark angels with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by his death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mirren, St. Brendan, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray you, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to grant very men faith and charity in the Pilgrim Church on earth, and to Simon Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who have gained from the Lord. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Brendan, whom you've called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son and a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transformed our lowly body after the pattern of his glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleased to at your passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. For then you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall become like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, who you sow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins and in the faith of your church, and graciously grant to peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but the word in my soul shall be.
Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart, Christ be within me, Christ be Christ be above me, never to part. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. Christ be in all hearts, thinking about me. Christ be in all tongues, telling of me. Christ be the vision, in eyes that see me, in ears that hear. Take me to thy sacred heart and seal the entrance all that from that home my wayward soul may never wander more. O Jesus, O Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Brendan, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Redemptoris Mater, we per via celi potamanes, et 
Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Father Brendan, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, we, may that we pray that the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith and teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. As signs of farewell, Canon Brendan's remains are now sprinkled one final time with holy water to remind us of the day of his baptism and reverenced with incense as the smoke from the incense rises to heaven. May our prayers for him go with it. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Brendan Healy in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings bestowed upon Canon Healy in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, we beg you to turn to us now and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Father Brendan forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take Brendan to his place of rest.